I'm in Phoenix, Arizona. Well, while I'm here, I figured I'd visit Brian Blake from F-Class Products so he can show me his iDOT neck turning machine. Brian, how you doing, man? How's it going? So, what can you tell me about your machines? So, what makes this one different from any other neck turner is we turn the inside and the outside of the neck simultaneously. So, that ensures virtually zero variation in neck thickness uh, during the cut compared to just doing it on a manual and cutting the outside only. How hard is it to change out calibers or what when when would your neck turn? I guess that's that's the who who is this machine for? The whole benefit to neck turning is consistent neck tension, consistent bullet release. So if we have uh, inconsistencies, more thickness on one side of the neck than the other, you have you have more force on one side than the other and it's kind of not going to be a consistent bullet release. You won't have consistent neck tension while seating. So the benefit is let's make it very consistent, very congruent all the way around and then we can control that neck tension and we know it's the same all the way around the bullet for that bullet release. Okay, so who's going to benefit from this machine because there's there's just a ton of neck turners out there. Huh? There's a ton. So the guys that from what I hear they skim turn which I'm not really even sure how scientific that is but they say they take off the high spots. Um, those type of guys that want to only take a few tenths off, this is not the machine for them. The guys that are taking a 13.5, a 14 thou neck and want to go to 12, 12.5, 12 that's where this will shine because you have to take material off the inside and the outside. And the benefit is uh, when you do that, you have no variation between. So uh, the guys that are just shooting uh, low volume count brass, um, don't need to turn a high volume or even guys that are just hunting or, or you know the lower end PRS guys you're not gonna probably see the benefit but for the guys that are at the very top that at a thousand yards they're trying to shoot 20 shots on a five inch circle you'll start to see that benefit then why do you want to do the inside I mean everybody so just about every Nick Turner out there only does the outside only does the outside and they turn on a mandrel as a pilot so the bullet touches the inside of the case, not the outside of the case. The outside of the case is just clearance. When it expands, it's just expanding up into the, uh, the chamber and its work is done on the outside. But that inside is where that bullet is obviously being guided from and you want that to be as precision and straight as possible. Okay, so these are the two machines that you have? Yes. So this is the manual version which we've had out for about eight months now, which does everything uh, uh, that you would need and then this one is the one we're coming out with which is the CNC version. Um, the only difference is the feed mechanism rather than being controlled by your hand on this hand wheel is being controlled by a stepper motor uh, and limit switches with a lead screw to do all the feeding so the feeding in and out is super consistent so if you feed in fast and feed out slow or vice versa with a manual machine you may see a couple tenths variation in neck thickness from case to case if you're not real consistent. This machine ensures that the human factor is taken out of it and mm -hmm. you will not have any inconsistencies on feeding with the CNC version. Okay, so can you show us, uh, maybe do a couple of cases as well so we can see yeah. the difference? So let's pick a 284, which as of right now, today, all we have is 65 284. Lapua brass, and this is just version new Lapua 65284 brass, and everybody uh, expands it, as we know. Let me grab an expander, and the best way we find to do it is this is just a basic RCBS 284 Winchester die, no bushing. So this is just the expander that comes with the die, and lube the necks, expand the necks. You can run them all the way in and out. So now it's expanded to seven millimeter. So, and you can actually hear that donut inside. And that's another big benefit to cutting the inside is you get to cut out that donut out of that brass. So let's just do five cases or, and we'll kind of show. Do so six, you, we'll do three on the, uh, there you go. on the manual and three on the uh, CNC. Okay, so that's just, Ran through the expander and the die. So let's just check some run out here. You can see here we have a lot, like ten thousandths. If you check this one, you have a lot also. So 
you can see. So I'm not gonna check the rest, they're all basically the same. But you take this expander back out and put this brass in. Now look at that run out. Let's make sure we're live here on the indicator. Look at this run out now. You can see we're way, way better. So what that does is that expander ball is pulling back through. It deforms that neck. So if we do it, you can see, you know, two and a half thousandths. If we do that without the expander, after it's already been expanded, it's still at that seven millimeter state, but it doesn't have a ton of run out. I just put it in and turn it three times to give an average on any amount of run out there could be in the die manufacturing. So as you see when we check these now, I mean, two thousandths. You need to make sure you have your run out of your case body to case neck is less than the amount of material you're gonna remove. So back to your question on who would and who wouldn't use the IDOT turner. So if you have necks that have five thousandths run out and you're trying to take two thousandths of neck thickness off, it's not gonna work. You're gonna cut a bunch off one side, not on the other. So this brass starts out generally around, oh, let's just check it. You see we're 14.5 basically, okay. So you can see there's half a thousand variation. So back to why you would turn. So most guys, when you turn on a mandrel turner, you would just expand this on an expanding mandrel that fits a snug fit on your mandrel of your turner when you're turning just the outside. But if you check the run out, as you've seen, is two thousandths. If you put an indicator on the inside, it's gonna be two to three thousandths because there's neck thickness variation. Now, You'll see when you guys cut on a mandrel, you'll see cuts into your shoulder will be heavy on one side and not on the other. That's from that basically wobbling. It's not wobbling on the mandrel per se, but your body is, and that's why you have a floating holder in the back. Well, with this, everything is rigid. So if we take this case here, so this is the, the spindle of the manual IDOD. Put that there, and you can see it hangs out here. And this case holder, is concentric OD to ID. So when you put that in there, we're running concentric to the OD right now. So when we cut here, now I haven't checked this thickness yet or this expanding, but you can see we didn't cut here on the inside, but we cut here on the inside. So let's say, I don't know, what, what thickness do you use, Eric? Uh, 13. 13. So this one is 12.7. So 12.5 oh, is fine. What we'll do, make sure our spindle is clean, no chips. And when you're setting it up, you'll see, well, maybe I'm coming up, cutting a lot off the inside, maybe I'm cutting a lot off the outside. So here you can see we're full clean up on the outside. We still have a little bit on the inside. So what we'll do is we'll move this cutter. We'll move that whole cutting system in a thousandths. And you can see we're at 12.5. So you can see the surface finish here on what we're achieving. We'll say, okay, I want to cut more. Go right there. So you see we're basically almost all the way cleaned up. Check our thickness here. 
could feel it actually cutting that donut out because you can feel when it gets right past it. Twelve five, same number. So now let's run. Uh, let's show the CNC version. So this is the same basic spindle setup. This is a prototype at this point. This is a prototype at this point. This harness, all this stuff is just a prototype, but it shows the function of what it will do. So if we run here, you can see we still have the handle, but all we have to do here is hit a button, it wraps up to where it needs to be, and it completely cuts, comes up to the shoulder, comes back. So what we can do here is we can set up on this one, you can see, to where that cut is consistent. So since we're cutting a little bit more on the outside, we'll bring this here to where it's cut a little more on the outside. You see we come there, depends how much you want to cut into the shoulder, feeds as it's coming back. And you can see the cut we have there. So if we check the thickness, twelve five. You can see we're getting where we just didn't quite clean up there, so we would adjust that out a little bit on this machine. 12.5. Now let's say one key benefit is, you know, when you have an inside mandrel uh, that you're turning on, if you were going to do this in the 6.5 state, you would have to buy another mandrel, uh, possibly even another shoulder angle if the shoulder angle changed. The benefit to the IDOT, it rides just off the parent case. So this case is in the 6.5 state a lot of guys want to turn in 6.5 state so all you got to do here is say okay we have this indicator we know that's 264 to 284 is roughly 20 thousandths we need to move radially so that's 10 thousandths so all we have to do here is let's move this in 10 thousandths to start and then we'll see where we are so if we come in we can see you know, we're going to cut a little more off the inside we'll move a little bit more We'll let that do its thing. So we have a 40 degree that's cutting a lot into the shoulder. We didn't adjust our shoulder depth. So we'll fix that now. But this is a 40 degree cutter. We would run normally a 35 for 284. We'll adjust that shoulder stop. See, we go there, we cut in. And we can measure. So our thickness is the same. So we should still be in roughly in that 12.5 area, which you can see we are. So that's one benefit over other type of turners, is we can do that without having to change a mandrel. Get the, uh, still haven't set this up to where it's fully there, but do you see that cut thickness is still the same? You can see we would cut more on the outside than the inside to maintain that consistent thickness. We'll run one more in the 6.5 state. that 
thickness. You can see we're right there at that same 12.5 area. So you can go well, just like you just did. You went from seven millimeter down to six five. Yep. And just like that. In less than a minute, and now you're ready to go. Yep. So and. You know, if you're not cutting deep into the shoulder, you can just use a 40 degree cutter and cut everything. If you're going to cut pretty deep in the shoulder, we make different angles all the way down to 20 for the 308 guys and all the way up to 40. Um, so, uh, but in the case holders, they change out, you know, pretty, uh, pretty simply. I can show you here. Let's say that you're shooting a wisdom also. And so all you do there is you come Tell them what a wisdom is. A 300 WSM. Let's say you want to shoot that caliber also, or you want to turn that caliber. You loosen up this nut on the back. It releases the collet. And then you just pull that case holder out. These are not standard Wilson case holders, because what we do is we grind, OD grind the OD to be concentric to the ID. Because when Wilson makes them, for how what they use them for, that doesn't need to be true, but we true them up. And we're getting to where we're just making them all custom now, especially for the custom calibers. So then you would grab a uh, 300 Wisdom or WSM or any of them. Let's just say this. We'll just say this is a, a 416 Barrett. So you want to switch from that to this. It's just a matter of putting that in there, putting the collet tool back in. Putting that wrench in the back of this collet nut, snugging that up, coming out, and boom. You're all set up now for 416 Barrett, that quick. All, right. all you have to do is move your cross slide to be out to that neck diameter you want, and you're ready to go. All right, how do they find you? Uh, we're on fclassproducts.com, as where these can be bought, and uh, our CNC version will be on there uh, very soon. All righty, man. I appreciate it. Thank you, Eric. Brian is not only a very smart machinist, <laughs> he's also a shooter, okay, which really helps because he has the machinist mentality, right? And while he's using the tools that everybody else is used to using, he can identify things that can make them better. And here we go. So he came up with the iDot, which uh, I have used myself, and it's a very, very nice machine. So anyway... Go check it out, and uh, that's all I got for today. We'll see you guys next time. Keep them centered. Tonight I'm feeling me, gonna make an ugly scene. Tonight I'm feeling.